Um, I like everything about the Jazz Crows. <laughs> um, you know, it's just uh, such a wonderful um, microcosm of, of a big world of music and a, and, a, and a big world of so many influences and, and so, so many identities um, and so much story, so much narrative and history, uh, musical you know, narrative that, that you get to sort of take a little, a little bite of. Um, it's been wonderful because a lot of these guys, um, um, you know, they know that my, my primary gig is playing R&D. Uh, but again, like a Houston person says to me, man, you know, I, you, you sounded great. And, you know, so in other words, there's an affirmation uh, of guys who are versed in so many different levels of this music we call jazz. And they've, they've you know, accepted me, which is wonderful. You know? So I guess that's probably the thing I like most. There are lots of similarities between the smooth jazz crews and the straight ahead jazz crews. You know, the passion for the music, the people. You're on a ship with, you know, 2,000, you know, truly passionate fans of the music, whatever it is. But there, there are some differences too. Like the smooth jazz crews tends to be kind of a hang. It's a social hang. People, you know, it's a party. You know, because it's, it's, you know, it's high energy and there's dancing, you know, I guess there's dancing here too, but, but it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a, again, it, it's R&B basically. I mean, smooth jazz is a, is a moniker that kind of floated to the top in a particular radio market in Chicago, I think, that, that ended up, you know, taking hold, you know, marketing people like to have something, uh, a handle. It, it never quite really described what was going on because for the most part it's R&B, it's instrumental R&B with this jazz underpinning, you know. Uh, when I got into it uh, in the early 80s, there was a lot more improvisation in it. So you could hear Herbie Hancock or Dave Sanborn or Spiral Gyra or the Crusaders or Bob James or Ronnie Laws and on and on and you would hear Cannonball, I guess, would you know be classified in that sense too, where there was a groove, but there was also interaction, and the same type of interplay between the instruments, the same type, except that it was an, it was a, it, the the groove of it, the swing of it, was was endemic to that epoch, as opposed to transplanting it to the groove of the 40s or the groove of the 50s. I think the street beat, black culture in essence, sort of tends to define what that is. You know, like in, in the 2000s, it, it's hip hop. You know, that's the street beat. And so when you hear, I'm jumping ahead, but when you hear an artist like Soweto Kinch from London, you hear somebody who's well versed on the sax on him. He can play anything from Lee Konitz to, you know, you know Charlie Parker, whatever. But he's also a rapper, and so the context into which this young Jamaican descent English person fits all of this jazz appreciation and jazz history is a modern context, similar to when Miles in the 50s, he took all that he learned from the swing era, but he transplanted it into the current beat, the swing of that era. And so I, I think that's probably, if anything, that's the thing for me that, that sort of connects all these various uh, waves of, of music. I will say that, to go back to your question, I would say that the smooth jazz, the, the, that idiom tends to have been kind of, kind of derailed in a sense by a, a very strong radio presence that was very much guided by marketing and demographics and sort of bean counting people and so well this these people like this kind of music so we're going to do this so then you had a lot of artists like myself and again like like the Sanborns and others who felt like well wait a minute I, I don't really know if I fit in here Marcus Miller you know so like where do we go now well, actually, that wave kind of went back down. So now the, the smooth jazz radio format is kind of in the process of kind of imploding, I think. You know, so that, so that what's left now, you find the Layla Hathaways, the Marcus Millers, Dave Samuels, 
now we're kind of doing what it is we did anyway, which is play this jazz sensibility into a into a sort of current groove or a current swing. 